an amazing success as far as I'm concerned for somebody your age when you think about it. To have a hit HBO show for how many years now as, as Girls Six. 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 I started seven years ago, but now it's been on, the, on so, the air for six seasons. So really in your 20s, you had tremendous success getting this show. Yeah. And from what I remember is the way you got into this is that you made a short film. I made a feature film. A feature film for like fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, twenty five thousand dollars. Then I needed another twenty five to. I didn't realize that color correction was a thing, so I raised <laughs> twenty five. Then I had to raise another twenty five to finish. It. Oh my god! When you say you raised twenty five, because I want to understand this, the twenty five thousand is enough to cover all of the shooting. Is that because you well, shoot it on video? I shot it on video. I was. It was actually the first film to be shot on this Canon five D camera. We right. were the first feature length to do that, and it was a little tiny camera that my director of photography, Jody Lipes, owned. And we shot the entire movie in my parents' apartment. So there was no location fees. The cast was my mom, my sister, and my best friend, Jemima, who's on Girls Now. Right. Talk about the time. So I, this is where I was leading. When you were first starting out mm -hmm. and you were making student films and all that kind of thing, because everyone says, well, how do I make it in show business? But your path was one of a writer and you made your own mm -hmm. films. But there was a point where you got a role on an HBO series. Am I correct? What was the name of that series? Uh, I believe you're talking about my role on Mildred Pierce. That's right, Mildred Pierce. Mm -hmm. You said it was such a disaster that, that you were on Mildred Pierce, you're yeah. shooting a scene, and while they had you out there to shoot the scene, you heard them auditioning other people for yeah. your part, right? I was. They auditioned extras, and I was sent home. <laughs> what? You were sent home, right? I was sent home. And the funny thing is the producer ended up producing, Eileen Landers ended up being the executive producer of Girls, so the person who was downstairs auditioning other people for my part ultimately ended up producing our show. Why would wow. you have her? I mean, I would think, like me, I get completely bitter when something like I that happens. I didn't happened. know. I was a day player. I had no idea what a... Pro I had never been on a set besides inside my own house. So I right. didn't know how anything worked. So I showed up that morning. They put me in hair and makeup as a nurse from the 1940s, 1930s. And the big problem was that Todd Haynes, one of my favorite filmmakers, had only seen me audition for a different role. And he'd also cast me sort of based on, I remember what it was, which is he wanted my friend Merritt Weaver and she was unavailable and someone went, how about this girl? And he was like, okay, that's a different chubby girl. That seems fine. I showed up. I had no idea. I asked my mom for advice, which was the worst idea. And I said, <laughs> look at these lines with me. And she said, they're hiring you to be yourself. Just go there and be yourself. No, they're that, hiring you to be someone else. They're hiring you to be a nurse from the fucking from 1940s. From the 1940s, yeah. <laughs> so like the lines were like, I remember the line was like, her fever's, looky ma'am, her fever's breaking. She should be fine by morning time or whatever. And I didn't know how to say it in the 19th. So I was like, so like her fever's breaking. <laughs> she should be fine by the morning, but like, let's check in. And then this dialect coach like swooped in and was like, actually you need to do it. Like roll your R's. It's a whole forties thing. And I just, I mean, I had true dissociative anxiety. I remember thinking if I collapse right here, They'll have to take me home in an ambulance, and that will be better for everyone involved. You've said you don't like being an actress, right? You, you, you'd you rather just be behind the scenes being a director and writer, and, mm -hmm. and maybe after Girls is over, that's all you're going to do, right? You're not going to want to be in front of the camera. Well, I like if I have a friend who has a project and I feel like we understand each other, I can appreciate that. Or if there's some an opportunity for me to, if I think I have something to bring to it, and I have a conversation with the director and we think that we can do something cool. I'm excited to try it, but like I have no interest in like, I would never like go out looking for a part in a movie. Is it a rush for you to think about that you took all these people like Allison Williams and this one and that one, you cast them in a show and now they all have careers. Is that some sort of satisfaction on your part? It's not like a creepy godlike thing where I'm like, I did it all, but I do love seeing people I love who are talented and I mean, there's not one member of our cast who I can't get behind talent-wise, personality-wise. I think they are all have their hearts in the right place and their souls on the right side of history. So it's like I feel good about having only – that Jenny and I have only sent people into the world who are making it a better place. Did those people have to audition for you? Did all of them have to? Jemima did not. Jemima had to, like, beg to be on the show. She'd been in my movie. Right. She was great in my movie. And then I'd written this part for her, and we auditioned, like – 300 girls, 300 great, smart, professional girls, but none of them had the quality. And also Jemima and I had a chemistry that came from, you know, at that point, 15 years of friendship that just wasn't 
I couldn't replicate with someone who I was meeting in an audition. Did HBO ever say to you, why don't you get somebody who's got a name? Because no. you weren't a name at that point. There wasn't anyone. HBO has been so supportive. They have truly only ever given us, like, smart emotional notes. Like, we haven't had the typical TV experience of, mm. like, being, I mean, the people who've worked with us have gotten us to such an extreme degree. Right. So there's no, if anything, they say, like, push it further, do what you need to do. I feel extremely, let's just say there's nothing I felt like I wasn't allowed to explore. <laughs>